Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2, and I'm back again with another film review. <sighs> it's a little bit hard for me to do this film review right now since I'm back on the single train due to six years. <laughs> Nothing to show for it. He's over there, I'm over here, and unfortunately he's very... <laughs> demanding and controlling and he got angry at the fact that I wanted to see my friend who I've known for 15 years and dude we don't have anything between us why would why would you be upset about that anyway it's over it's done I was the major bitch I let him go so I'm dealing with the consequences of that I probably had that coming but I'm not happy, and I just, I, I would cry, but I just, I don't have the energy to even spend on crying anymore, so I'm not. Anyway, this is a review of Pop Star Never Stop, Never Stopping. And I absolutely, I love this movie, don't get me wrong. It was just <laughs> hilarious, and it reminded me a lot of This is Spinal Tap, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. It was basically a version of that, only with a pop star named uh, Connor. And Connor begins with the band of three guys to begin with. And a lot of the songs that he wrote, the raps that, that he produced, it, it just really reminded me of Ninja Sex Party. I thought, hmm, did they get their idea from Ninja Sex Party or Tupperware Remix or um, Sky Hill? Well, that's actually, I should say, Danny's first, da Danny's first band. I know I'm a fangirl. Danny's first band was Sky Hill when he was younger and then he came up with um, Ninja Sex Party and Star Bomb and Tupperware, I think Star Bomb and Tupperware Remix uh, were the brainchild, both the brainchildren of Aaron because um, uh, he's an instrumental part of that and they've got the just the whole crew. It, it's so cool, I thought. <laughs> I mean, it just started off with, you know, a band that he came up with. But anyway, sorry, I'm going off track. But uh, it's it's a lot like this is Spinal Tap. And it's done in, joking, in a joking fashion. And a lot of superstars are involved in it. I was really shocked at the, su at the superstar power. I thought, wow, you got a lot of big names. Like you got DJ Khaled. And you've got Mariah Carey. And Weird Al Yankovic, who just, he's a cameo. You got uh, Steven Tyler. You've got uh, Pink. I actually know Pink's cousin. <clears throat> seven degrees of, I should say, six, what is it, six degrees of Kevin Bacon or seven degrees of Kevin Bacon? I don't know. I, I just know her via inference only, and I keep telling Jack, you need to write a memoir, and you need to do it now because I totally buy it. And also, awesome, <laughs> you're related to Alicia Moore. That's kick butt. Anyway, um, going forward, this movie is hysterical, and there's so many things that are just uh, really random about it, and it just uh, it showed just how ludicrous and inane music has become, and it could be about anything, and people think it's good. I'm like, no, no, and this makes me sound like an old fogey, but there are there are songs from back in the day. I mean, back in my parents' day, that it was it was music it told a story it was um you know a ballad about people going into war or you know you know songs about coming to the the home front and and being greeted by the ones they love i mean it, it could be anything or it was a sad song about uh, someone who had died and you know the back the pipes were played like you know ben danny boy is the song that makes me cry that's one of those uh uh, Irish songs that just, you know, it'll get you every time. I don't care who you are. You don't even have to be Irish to have that song make you cry. Same thing with Amazing Grace. Anywho, um, it was a very funny film, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, you know, it could have done without all the profanity. That was one thing I didn't care about. Um, I was, um, kind of, uh, so a surprise that Weird Al, I mean, Weird Al didn't swear, thank God, because that would have really... Might, might have given me a freaking heart attack, but um, as far as films are concerned, I, I give it 3.5 out of 5. It's like I said, the profanity was unnecessary, and I just think it was stupid. 
But beyond that, it was just it was a funny, funny film and hysterical. And they made fun of TMZ and, and music and pop star uh, lifestyle and <laughs> and also hit some hot button issues like, have you been under a rock all these years? People people who are gay can get married now. <laughs> it's so funny. And a lot of the songs that he, he sang were uh, offensive. And I thought, yep, this reminds me of Bruce McCulloch. Bruce McCulloch's work, which I still love Bruce McCulloch. Uh, you know, Kids in the Hall. And uh, I also like David Lynch, who is a genius. And I'm thinking that, I don't know, this guy kind of looked like him. So I was wondering if it was David Lynch. Because if not, then it was his twin brother. <laughs> But it, it was a good movie, but it, it really didn't do enough to, to actually get me out of my funk. So I'm, I'm sorry, and I'm just going to stop so I don't bring the rest of you down. That's all I have to say for now. See you next time. Live long, prosper, ciao, duty.